I hear a lot of people say, oh, COVID-19, that's just as dangerous as influenza. Well, it's not. It's way more infectious and it's way more lethal. Let me show you why. A patient with influenza will infect, on average, between 1.4 and 1.8 other individuals. Someone who's infected with SARS-CoV-2, who has COVID-19, the disease, will infect between 2 and 3.1 other individuals. So we're looking at an exponential growth curve here. Every 3 to 4 days, the number of infected individuals doubles. Here are the total cases excluding mainland China from Worldometer. We can see that today, it's March 11th, we have 38,170 cases outside China. And four days ago, one, two, three, four, we had 21,399. So roughly a doubling time of four days, maybe even a bit more. So it seems like the disease spreads a little slower than initially described. Here we see a number of three days on ourworldindata.org. Let me show you what you can do in order to assess the likely scenario that's going to occur in your area, in your city, in your state, based on the example of Austria. That's the country I live in. It's a small country of 8.8 .8 million inhabitants. What's the situation here? So in Austria, we had 29 cases on March 4th and 157 cases on March 9th. Let's calculate the doubling time. So March 4th to March 9th, that's five days. We had 157 cases on March 9th. So 29, that's the number on March 4th, times two to the power of x. X is the number of doubling intervals. Let's solve that for X. X is equal to 2.44 doubling intervals. So there are 2.44 doubling intervals in these five days. Now, what do we need to do in order to calculate the doubling time? Well, we need to divide five by 2.44, and that's equal to 2.1 days. That's the doubling interval in Austria. So that's a bit scary because it's actually quite significantly lower than in the rest of the world outside China. So I took the number of cases that we had on March 9th and I extrapolated the development of cases, taking a doubling interval of three days in order to see how many cases we're likely going to see in the immediate future if the doubling interval is not prolonged through social distancing and other public health interventions. So as you can see on this graph, in 45 days, we could see 4 million Austrians being infected at a doubling interval of three days. And that's when we would reach herd immunity, at which point the epidemic would likely peak and the number of cases would go down again. But obviously, that would only happen if we wouldn't do anything against it, if we wouldn't implement any measures like social distancing, avoiding crowds, reducing unnecessary travel, and so forth. So that's the worst case scenario, if you will. So if we don't pay attention in Austria, then in 18 days, we would exceed the number of cases that we currently see in Italy, which was 9,172 on March 10th. So obviously, the situation in Italy, which is a neighboring country of Austria, is pretty bad. And if I tell people that number, they're actually quite scared and it's a bit of a wake up call to them. What you can do next is to look at how many severe cases or critical cases you're likely to encounter in your area. We know that 81% of cases of COVID-19 are mild. 14% are severe, and 5% are critical. The critical likely need a bed in the intensive care unit. So what I would do next is to look at the number of hospital beds that we have in Austria. And you can do the same for your area. And we can see that in Austria, we have 67,000 hospital beds. 
But what's more important is to look at how many intensive care unit beds we have in Austria. So I found this article and this article says that we have 23.4 beds in the intensive care units per 100,000 inhabitants. So we have 23.4 ICU beds per 100,000 in a country that has 8.8 .8 million inhabitants. How many beds are those? That's 23.4 times 88. That equals 2,059 beds. But obviously, these beds are not all empty. There are patients in them. So if we assumed, and that's already a pretty high assumption, that we could free up 50% of these beds for COVID-19 patients, then we would have 1,000 beds available. Now, if we assume a doubling interval of three days, then in 21 days, we would reach 1,000 critically ill COVID-19 patients. This means that in 21 days, this capacity of 1,000 free beds, 50% of the entire ICU capacity would be reached. After this time, there will be no space for critically ill patients with COVID-19. Let's look at the incubation period. When are these people getting sick, actually? Well, as we've seen in a previous video, the incubation period of COVID-19 is 5.2 days on average. So let's put that into this graph. So the patients who won't get a bed here will actually be infected somewhere around here. So this time period that we're in right now is super critical if we want to implement efficient public health measures. So in order to persuade your public health authorities to act and in order to persuade the population to act, you would need to take the numbers of your state, of your city, and do a similar calculation. I would also present this curve here, which in my opinion, is probably the most important graph of the entire epidemic. Now, I want to give credit to Carl Bergstrom for creating this graph. Many people have actually contributed to this graph and it's been widely shared on Twitter. And the reason why I think it's so, so important is that it drives home the point elegantly of why we need to act and why we all need to work together in order to spread out the epidemic. We absolutely need to avoid this spike here. We all need to work together to prolong the doubling interval. Here you see the capacity of the healthcare system. If we don't work together to create a curve that looks more like this, we will arrive at way higher mortality rates than have been described in the literature. On the other hand, if we manage to extend the curve, through measures like hand washing, teleworking, limiting large gatherings, minimizing travel, no shaking hands. If we do all that, then we will be able to extend the curve to look something like this without overstretching the healthcare system too much.